Hey Jimmy, it's the 1800s, an exciting time to be alive. Why don't you get out there and explore the world? Gee whiz, Mom, thanks. Where am I? <laughs> You're in Russia. Have I gone back in time? No, this is just how it is. Are you a farmer? Worse. Technically my landlord owns me, which makes me a serf. I'm scared. You should be, because I haven't eaten in four days, and you look pretty tasty. Hey, Jimmy, how are your travels? <laughs> I hate you! My lord, we're falling behind the rest of Europe. It's time to industrialize, give the people rights, and share your power. <laughs> They'd need a strong ruler with some big ideas. Oh, look, here comes one now. Hey, everyone, it's me, Tsar Alexander II, and I've got some big news. I'm releasing you all from your serfdom. You're all free. Yep, I'm the best. Oh, there is one thing though. I spoke to your local lords and they weren't happy about losing all their free labor. So as a compromise, you're all gonna have to pay them back a near impossible amount of money for the next 49 years. Expect your lives to barely change. Okay, bye. How does one man get to decide the fate of everyone in the country? This whole system is dumb. Somebody should do something. Like what? Like kill the czar. You're gonna kill the czar? Well, me, no, I'm busy. I was kind of hoping you'd do it. Okay. See? The people love me. They're throwing flowers, confetti, and high-grade explosives. Okay, Nicholas, your grandfather has a mild case of being blown up by a terrorist, and he's not looking too hot, so we're gonna go say our goodbyes, okay? No, it'll be too scary for him. Nonsense, it won't be scary at all. We're just gonna say a quick goodbye. Ready? Boy! Look at me! The people did this to me! And one day... They'll do it to you! See? Wasn't scary at all. Diversity in our great nation. Alexander thought all these minorities should be a little more Russian, and thereby loyal to him. Now that's how you run a country. Hey, Dad? Ugh, great. It's my son, Nicholas, who I like to call a girly girl because he's so weak and pathetic. When are you gonna grow up? Hmm? Eh, you still look like a girly girl to me. But Dad, I grew a beard. Yeah, an ugly girly girl beard. <laughs> If Nicholas was to one day be czar, he needed his dad to teach him how to run the country. But his dad instead suggested that Nicholas go somewhere else. So Nicholas went to Japan, got an edgy dragon tattoo, had his head sliced off by a policeman, and then came home. Now will you teach me how to rule? <sighs> I suppose it's time. Okay, there's a lot you need to know before becoming czar. Uh-oh. What? I've got kidney inflammation. Oh no! Vladimir Lenin, an intelligent member of Russia's middle class, and also a massive ill-tempered jerk. If you disagreed with him about anything, he wasn't afraid to call you out. You fat-headed, simple-minded, vapid, cockeyed imbecile! Tender heart bear is a far superior care bear to bedtime bear. <laughs> and he was no stranger to political unrest either. His older brother was executed for plotting to kill the czar. And Lenin himself was expelled from university for participating in a student protest. But how did Lenin go from being a middle-class nerd to the arbiter of socialist divinity? Well, to tell that story, we first need to go back a few decades to when a man named Karl Marx wrote a manifesto explaining how capitalism is a system whereby the stinky bourgeoisie oppressed and exploited the working masses and that only through class warfare could the workers rise up and instate a communist utopia. Now go back forward a few decades to Lenin reading that manifesto and loving it. But publicly admitting you loved Marx and not Russia's big daddy would get you the cruelest punishment imaginable. Exile to Siberia. Enjoy exile where you'll live with your wife, chill around town, and secretly write socialist newspapers. Hey, that doesn't sound so bad. And your mother-in-law is going to live with you. No! Once Lenin finished his stint in Siberia, he left Russia for Europe, where he was free to hang out with other Russian Marxists and talk about how great communism was. Now today, you might hear the word communism and think of this. But that's not how intellectuals living under a tough czarist regime saw it. To them, communism promised a land where all were equal, where workers weren't exploited, and even people like you could get a girlfriend. So Lenin joined a party of Russian communists living in Europe, and he founded a communist newsletter that was smuggled into Russia to try to radicalize the people. However, not everyone in the Socialist Party agreed with Lenin. In fact, they disagreed with him on a lot of issues, and Lenin was so uncompromising that he caused a split in the party. During one conference, a heated debate broke out, and Lenin was unwilling to give an inch. You pig ignorant, half-witted, fatuous morons! Cereal is a soup! Listen, Lenin, you're a smart guy, but you have no idea what you're talking about. We're out of here. All in favor of cereal being a soup? Hey, would you look at that? We're in the ma- Cool. 
a free hat. Who the heck are you? I'm definitely not a Russian secret police officer spying on Marxists. Oh crap, I don't want secret police watching me. Then you, my friend, should use NordVPN. Shows on Netflix. Well, with NordVPN, you can watch the Australian version. Or Nick, we really got to industrialize, get more factories, and make some, I don't know, textiles or something. Hmm, won't that change the social fabric of Russia? Maybe. Hey, isn't it past your bedtime? But I haven't had my milk and snuggles yet. Will you snuggle me? Um, Nicholas thought modernization was boring, but he let Sergei do his thing. And do his thing he did. He borrowed some money and got Russia some sexy factories. And you know what sexy factories means. Sexy workers. Dirt poor sexy workers. Me. What do I do? Oh, I know. Why don't we find a weak and pathetic nation to go to war with? We'll win easily, and everyone will love me again. Why don't we just try treating the people better? Idea to reduce the tension. Hey man, we'll let you do your thing in Manchuria if you let us do our thing in Korea. Uh, I don't think so. We've got the largest army in the world. What do you have? I'm the Emperor of Japan. I have a giant mecha suit. Whoa. Cool. Hey everyone, we're at war with Japan. Hey everyone, we're losing the war. We're outraged. Unrest increased. Nicholas needed snuggles now more than ever. Nicholas, some priest is leading a peaceful protest. Says here they want to give you a petition. A peaceful petitioning priest? I better get out of here. Nicholas had actually left the Winter Palace days earlier, and in his place, they brought in a truckload of troops, ordered to stop Father Gapon from reaching the palace. Hello, good sir, and long live the Tsar. Please, allow me to pass this simple petition to our dear father, Nicholas II. Good day to you too. Please, allow us to respond by opening fire. Everyone relax. As long as the military is still on my side, there's nothing to worry about. Sir, the sailors are starting to mutiny. Well, my life just sucked. Hey, remember that manifesto I wrote and how you guys were going to approve my laws? Mm-hmm. Slight change of plan. Actually, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want, and you guys are going to shut up. What? The people won't stand for this. People? What people? You know, this is why people don't like you. Stole a pin's necktie. I don't get it. Oh, I see. Because it goes around my neck. <laughs> That's so funny. Blah. Anything. Luckily, it was around this time that Lenin met an incredibly handsome Georgian with your second favorite historical mustache, Joseph Stalin. Lenin and Stalin met at a communist convention in Finland, and Lenin liked Stalin because he was a real go-getter and was great at fundraising for the Bolsheviks. And by fundraising, I mean kidnapping, robbing, extorting, bribing, ransoming, assassinating, prison breaking, stealing, bank raiding, executioning, and stealing again. Hey Stalin, the Mensheviks aren't so hot in all this stealing, but we still need money. So the next time you do a big heist, just do it quietly. Okay, quietly. Got it. If this isn't quiet, I don't know what is. He spent it doing this. But as weird as the whole Rasputin thing was, so long as the economy continued to improve and the people's lives kept getting better, maybe Nick would be okay. Maybe there would be no more revolutions. Maybe this video could even end right here. Or maybe things were about to get worse. A lot worse. You see, the year is 1914, and that means it's time for World War One.